This week on Top Travel, Jeannie and Yanez are exploring Africa, starting with scenic Route 62, their first stop being Peaceful Robertson, known as the Valley of Wine and Roses. They then pull into an infamous bar in the Karoo, as well as an ostrich and crocodile farm in Otuan. Then it's to Kimberley, home of the Big Hole. Home really is where the heart is. From one of the best World Cup soccer cities to the UNESCO World Heritage Site to design capital of the world, Cape Town really is the place to be. Cape Town is just beautiful. It's the most beautiful place in the world. We've traveled everywhere. We've been to Rio, we've been to Sydney, and this is just by far the best. Also, it's livable. Those are the streets where I learned how to cycle, how to, how to drive a car. I climb that mountain almost every weekend when I'm in the country. I truly love Cape Town. And so here begins our African adventure. I actually think I can see your house from here. Especially because we've traveled so much of the world, the minute we get back to Africa, South Africa, Cape Town, wherever we go in South Africa, everything smells different, everything tastes different, everything feels different. There's a pulse, there's an energy where you almost feel like the ground is alive. It's Africa. What elements of the city made Cape Town eligible to be the World Design Capital? Well, we were very clever when we were bidding for World Design Capital. We, we chose to approach design from the fact that we are African and we've always used design to solve solutions. So we had a slogan of Live Design, Transform Life, which basically say our design is about transformative design. It's a kind of design that transforms lives. And so we looked at the fact that the city was designed under apartheid at the time. So we find race groups separated and true design were trying to reconnect those communities. You know, if you uplift pockets of a city, it almost has this domino effect. You uplift one area, it affects another area, and soon the entire city is just completely rejuvenated. This is just a glimpse into the unique mindset of your typical Cape Tonian. I mean, nobody's ever questioned it. I've never known why, and it confuses me. Why is this highway unfinished and it's been like this for so long? What do you mean it's unfinished? I thought it was designed like this. <laughs> One of the theories is that it was actually a design error and it's quite ironic that Cape Town is going to be the world design capital. Well, considering it's not used as a highway, it certainly is one of the most bustling places in Cape Town for film sets and uses for movies, amazing TV shows, commercials. <laughs> but it's also the perfect spot for us to start our journey and for us to broaden our horizons and explore the rest of Africa. Should we hit the road? Yeah, road trip time. Are you driving? What a question. <laughs> nice wheels, by the way. South Africa is one of those magical places. And like, you know, the French always get blamed for not wanting to travel through the world because in France they have everything. In total truth, South Africa has everything. We've got the most impressive coastlines in the world. We've got wine routes, we've got forests, we've got the Great Karua, we've got game farms. But today, Route 62, which is the longest wine route in the world, actually leads all the way from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth. Robertson is a major town on Route 62 and it's one of those quaint old traditional towns. It has the small hotel which is so charming because it's the best of the old world and also the best of the new world. This is such a gem and really quite an unexpected find in Robertson. Yeah, you know, we're very fortunate to have this in a place like Robertson which is an undiscovered uh, wine region. So especially for the wine tourism, old town, small town, uh, big heart. And uh, also that's what the people, you know, warm. So they try to achieve that also with the buildings. The service was impeccable. The setting was perfect. And it's also connected to Rubens, who is one of the greatest chefs in South Africa. One reason why I have the utmost respect for him is because instead of being all flashy and opening up these top-notch restaurants everywhere, he goes to the places where he can access the best produce to create some of the greatest flavors. I knew this was going to happen. We got our luggage mixed up. <laughs> I know. But, you know, I must say, I never realised, but girls wear so much more comfortable than guys wear. I'm just so pleased that I look hotter in your clothes than you do. I know how to work this look. The only thing I want back is my shoes, actually. I suppose I could have just walked across and changed bags, but lately I've been learning to think like Inez. I read that Think Like a Man, Act Like a Woman. So I knew exactly what he would do. So I wore his clothes. And choose Bob. He did exactly the same thing. We share a brain. We've just 
off the Route 62. We're still cruising in our beautiful car. And I love this part of South Africa. It is so picturesque. We've got these mountains, the farmlands. There's just so much to do. I, th I think it's beautiful here. <laughs> Most visitors to this region would stop and do wine tastings all day. But because we want to be different, we've decided to harvest our own honey. So what are the precautions we have to take? I can smell your both lovely, lovely scented. So I think we should get rid of that and put some smoke on the fire. Do the bees not like the smell of our body odors or the perfumes we wear? The scent itself, the bees, they go crazy. Then they just start to sting you. Mm -hmm. So we have to get rid of that. The thing is, both Ginny and I are very allergic to bees, so hence the fact that we're going to get totally smoked out. Yeah, we've got it. <laughs> Some beekeepers believe that the more stings a beekeeper receives, the more immune they get to being stung. Yanez and I were not having any of that. <laughs> this is great. I feel like Lady Gaga. This is not a joke for Where me. Is this, this is a serious place? matter. Bees are vitally important to the survival of humankind. For every third bite that you eat, you should be thankful for bees. And if the bees are not here to pollinate our food sources anymore, we will die out in two to three years. I'm nervous. Yeah, this is, this is dangerous. The noise of the swarm is so unsettling. I was totally paralyzed by those bees. They were everywhere, thousands of them. And even though I was completely covered, I had so much anxiety in me. The only way I could calm myself down and calm the bees down was to pump that smoke. More smoke, more smoke. I actually didn't see anything. Give it a tap to get rid of the bees. Oh, gosh. Take off the bucket list, buy, thanks. In the pocket, done. I'm cool. Well done, Jules. Okay, can I give it to you? Because I don't like this. <laughs> Thank you. And that is how you make beautiful honey. <laughs> From bees that sting you, but at the same time save the world, because we do need them, so I have to appreciate them for that, to beautiful Mampur, from one extreme to the other. I guess actually not one extreme to the other, because bees can create extreme pain in me because I'm allergic, and so can Mampur, because you don't have to be allergic, but it still creates extreme pain. <laughs> I love Mampur, though. It's so typically South African. No, this Divari Jacob. This is Divari Jacob. This is Mark van Apokoos. No, this is like lekker bang. <laughs> Apokoos. Goeie apokoos in Mampoor, wat vir drie jaar verouder is. Three years, wow. So, this is only reserved for special guests. And in small quantities. Wow. I'm still suffering from that last shot. <laughs> in very small kind of, uh, quantities. Look, that's a, a quarter of a shot. <laughs> Cheers. Ah! Finally, they're making a man out of your nest. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're moving on from the bees to the birds of Otsuan's ostrich farm, but not before making a pit stop at an infamous bra-covered bar. Ronnie's sick shop. What is that? Just stop. I want to see what this is. Did what that just it? say Ronnie's sex shop? Ronnie's sex shop? Ronnie's what shop? Sex shop. Ooh. You're so eager to see what Ronnie's sex shop is. What, what are you looking to buy exactly? Well, what a strange place to have a sex shop. You simply can't pass a store like this and not come and investigate to see what they sell. You see, it's a pump stasi on the other side. Pump stasi, yeah. <laughs> That's, but the pump stasi means a petrol station. Oh. Hello. Hello, girls and boys. Hello, hello. Uh, just girls. Just go. Interesting establishment you have here, Mr. Ronnie. And you like this? <laughs> it's nice. It's I like, nice. I like it's this. <laughs> this I like. Panties, G-strings, bras, jock straps, French lace, capure lace, you name it. All kinds of underwear were hanging in Ronnie's sex shop. Ronnie, how did this whole place come about? Well, I'm a... in 1989, I bought the farm. This was a broken down cottage. I wanted to open up a farm store. Uh, which was a bad idea at the time, as there was only one car a day. So I put Ronnie's shop on the wall and nothing else, and about two years later, friends of mine put the sex on as a joke. I didn't think it was very funny, and I left it and stood empty for about seven years. And in that time, people were stopping and seeing there was nothing here and talking about it. And then I got spoken into doing something, so I opened a bar. Everyone said I was mad, and I'm going, we'd have our own bar, what's the problem? <laughs> and it took off from day one. It was crazy. Now, you've got to leave your knickers behind, right? 
<laughs> you can't come to Ronnie's sex shop without leaving your knickers behind. I think you can leave your knickers behind. Well, I'm still wearing your knickers from earlier this morning because we missed bags. Why were you wearing my underwear in the first place? This whole day you've been travelling with me wearing my underwear. Yeah, but I must tell you, new discovery, life-changing, a G-string is really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. There's something wrong with you. I am a little bit strange, I won't lie. Why did that upset you so much? You were wearing my underwear. In these situations, it happens once in a lifetime. Sometimes you have to do the ridiculous. So I'm removing my beautiful felt skin. Let's face the facts. You would never have donated your undies to Ronnie's sex shop. I did on your behalf. I would never have donated my undies to Ronnie's sex shop. <laughs> Quite right. If you ever come to South Africa and you travel Route 62, which is the most beautiful route in South Africa, be sure to come and have a look. Uh, at the panties of Jeannie B. <laughs> Route 62 is not only special because of all the towns that you visit, that is some of the most beautiful countryside you'll ever see. It is so picturesque. You can spend hours just gazing out of a car window and that's all I did. I spent hours just looking at how beautiful South Africa is. The Route 62 has brought us to the quaint little town of Otsuren, which is also the home to one of the biggest arts festivals in South Africa, known as the Car, Car and Car. Now what I've never understood is why they refer to it as the Klein Karua when it's actually quite vast. Uh, but if you compare it to the Groot Karua, it's still very small. It's only 250 k's long, 70 kilometers wide, separated in the north by the Swartberg Mountains and by the Garden Route, those coastal mountains with all the streams and all the water flowing into the Olifant River, which makes this land very fertile. Hence why it's one of the greatest wine routes in the world and also why ostriches survive here. I love ostriches. Please let's go and see them. They've got such long eyelashes Thank and you. tail feathers. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. How's it, Sam? Oh, wow. Would you like to feed them? I yes, would. I'm going to have a go. This is for there we go. <laughs> I'll try to feed this one again. There thank we go. you. These birds are incredibly aggressive feeders, but they don't really, I mean, they just huck. I mean, he wasn't even getting any of the food, he was just digging in at the plate. It was intimidating, but they are quite pretty. They've got these massive eyes, these long eyelashes. Uh, Sam, why are there so many ostriches in the Otsuran area? It is their natural habitat. Um, Otsuran is part of the Karu, Karu, which means dry land in Khoi language. It is their home. If they needed to, would they be able to fly? Well, that's a very good question. Um, if you could dig deeper, they, from the descent of the dinosaur, considering maybe the structure of the toes, only two toes. All ratites or flightless birds have three toes. Flying bird got four or five. It only has two. Now, it's believed that their parent or their ancestor was a flying reptile. It's a very strong possibility. And in the future, we do not know if they will fly. Yes, their feathers are dry, abnormal bird feathers. They haven't got muscle on the breastbone. There is no meat on the chest and a heavy body. So they may jump, but flying, it's, uh, we cannot really elaborate much on that. There's a strange fact that when Henry Ford designed his first Model T Ford, the entire ostrich industry in South Africa collapsed. And why? Because when you're a lady driving in your beautiful new car, your hat's going to blow off. Hat's blowing off? No, ostrich industry. <laughs> go, go! <laughs> this is brilliant. Are ostriches dangerous? They can kill you. Do you know what they do? They first, they first jump into you with their chest, they knock you over, and then with those long, ugly legs, they just kick you, and they can just crush your chest. They can kill a human. <laughs> he doesn't like it. <laughs> Yeah, baby! Yeah, 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 birdie. That's what I do to you. I ride you. I ride you. Hey? Who's the champ now, birdie? Number one.
Damn, Sam, I owned that, eh? Boom! Hey? <laughs> I'm peacocking. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly, I'm peacocking now. That's awesome. Well done. Boom. I can't remember the experience. I was too petrified. I just remember holding onto the wing and then somehow surviving it and then getting off and then pumping my fist thinking I did it. When we come back, our duo bravely go crocodile cage diving in Otuan before moving on to Kimberley's big hole with high hopes of finding a diamond in the rough. Ostrich. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, stop. The ostriches were even more comfortable than you. <laughs> what a bizarre thing to do, racing ostriches. It's crazy. In Otuan, they are really a bit wacko. But now, you've heard of shark cage diving, right? Yes, but we can't do that here. We're in Otsu and it's, it's landlocked. I know it's landlocked, but they've taken things to the next level. Here you can do crocodile cage diving. Hey, how cool is that? Only problem, don't stick your hands out. You might lose your manicure. I'm quite scared of this, actually. I know that we really are big kids. But just before you're about to go swimming with crocodiles, anything will scare you. Ah! <laughs> we didn't do that at the same time. We share a brain. <laughs> They're cool, eh? Look, he's yawning. He's oh, nice. That's how scary it was. Ah! <laughs> Why do that before you go and look at or dive with crocodiles? Come on. Would they eat us? Yes. You know that this is the only predator that sees humans as part of their diet. Really? The others don't really want to eat us, except for a croc. Where do they fit in in the food chain? Right on top. Once a croc reaches about three and a half to four meters in length, he's the main man in the river system. However, they stay away from hippos. Just imagine if you have a one and a half ton hippo running over a croc, he's dead. Yeah. However, they can close their jaws under tension of nearly two tons per square centimeters. So if you get hold of a hippo, it's game over for the hippo either. So they, they do stay away from each other. I'm quite excited to do this. <laughs> Let's go. I'm nervous. <laughs> Crocodiles have not evolved or changed at all in the last 200 million years. <laughs> I feel like I've been given up for food, really. <laughs> Going down was just, it was petrifying. It was, it was like an adrenaline rush, huh? I didn't think it was going to be scary because they put you down in a cage. I'm like, oh, there's a cage. But then as we got under, they kind of just lurked. Crocodiles are lurkers. And then the same way as you see in the cartoons and you see in the movies, both of them just started circling. It was terrifying because had there not been a cage, they're predators. Oh. They're predators. They just prey on you. You can see those, that eye just goes circles around you, one and the other, one on top, one below. Wow. <laughs> I honestly feel like I've been fed to crocodiles. It's really, it's not natural to be this close. <laughs> they were throwing in little pieces of meat and they weren't even interested in the meat. They wanted to eat the bigger meat, which is us. <laughs> I promise you, had they come for us, I would have sacrificed you. Who are you calling a big meat, first of all? <laughs> well, that came out wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do yourself a favour. Go to Oturin and go crocodile cage diving. It is an experience you will never forget. You will treasure that forever. Phenomenal. Now I needed to get back to my good old self and brighten up my day with a bit of sparkle and... Uh, Ching! Diamonds. My dear lovely Jeannie, in 1871, the first diamond was discovered right here in Kimberley. And only two years later, in 1973, this place became a town or a city. Can you believe that? <laughs> in two years, the entire city was built. Do you know why? Became the diamond rush. Thousands of opportunists, desperate people, people that just wanted to become filthy rich, flocked towards Kimberley, hoping to find that big diamond. And some people make it. Personalities like Barney Bonato and Sir Cecil John Rhodes himself. Back in 1866, a man called Erasmus Jacobus came about a white pebble along the banks of the Orange River near Hopetown. Turns out, it wasn't a pebble. 21.5 carats of glory. Later, they called it Eureka. I found it. What is that? What is that black rock over there, or that grey rock? The solid rock that you're looking at is a volcanic pipe. The volcanic pipe is called the Kimberlite pipe, and that's where most of our diamonds are mined today. And this Kimberlite pipe is about 19 million years old. 
and the eruption that it had was so violent that it changed the face of Earth. That hole was excavated to a depth of 240 meters, all with hand and shovel. Can you imagine that? That was some diamond rush. So, Yanez, yes. 15.5 million carats of diamonds were found in this big hole. Surely there's a few little stones just waiting to be discovered by me. So, this is how it works. Diamonds are found in rocks like this. This is the kimberlite. So basically, it's a very, very soft rock and goes even softer when you add water, like mud almost. So, there could potentially be diamonds in here and I'm gonna find them. <laughs> that's, that's not gonna work. I promise you, you actually need to do the hard work. And by the way, you're looking so stylish today, you should make more of an effort in future. Should we go mine? Orange is my colour. In the lift we go. Let's go mining. Thank you. I genuinely thought that there was a possibility that we could find diamonds down there. Just a small little one. Just a little something to tease. Which is between us. If I find a stone here, it's my finders keepers. No, unfortunately not. Swallow it. <laughs> They'll never find it. Look the other way, about. darling. I think I know Jeannie's personality pretty well. And I know she's not really into manual labor. I've never seen Jeannie work so hard manually in my entire life. What is that? It's... Oh! 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 22 million tons of earth had been moved, yielding 3,000 kilograms of diamonds. When you take that much out of the earth, things could go wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's this? Did you find a diamond? Okay, let me test to see if this is a diamond. If it breaks, it's not. Oh, it's glass, it broke. Don't be depressed. <laughs> I am depressed. If you want to make me happy, these aren't the kind of stones to put in front of me. Well, what do you want? Real, real diamonds? Uh, we yes. can't get them here. Fact is, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Bling! I've learned from past shopping disasters never to go into an expensive retail outlet with Genie D and my credit card in hand. OK, so what do you think? Huh? They are just, they're all magnificent. Look at these earrings. These actually suit me as well, hey? It's beautiful. I've, I've, I've never seen so many beautiful pieces. They, I wouldn't know which one to choose. That one as well. Those ones. That one as well. OK, Yanez, can I have your card, please? Jeans, I'm going to be completely honest with you now. If this was like our 20-year friendship anniversary, I might help you out. It's not. I know diamonds mean a lot to Jeannie, and therefore, she should invest in them herself. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford the diamonds. But alas, I had another surprise for Jeannie. The only problem was it was at 3 a.m. in the morning. Next week on Top Travel, Jeannie and Yanez board the blue train and travel to Soweto, where they discover the fascinating foodie scene. Then we're off to the Madikwe Game Reserve, where a scenic drive becomes an incredible adventure to help prevent the extinction of South Africa's precious rhino.